What's up, guys? He's back with another video. None other than the man, the myth, the legend, formerly known as, aka Mr. Ten Tips himself, now known as Mr. Five Tips himself, Ben Ochart. And he's going to talk to you guys about Fluval canister filters. Stay tuned. Thank you, Evan, for that uh, great introduction. <laughs> I used to be uh, 10 tips if you look at my uh, older videos. <laughs> we've, uh, we've given that to John Hudson now, and uh, now I'm Mr. Five Tips. So, <laughs> so, so thank you, Evan. Thank you for that. So uh, here are uh, five, five uh, mistakes that I hear a lot about from people who are using Fluvals, Fluval FX5, FX6s, and uh, I'll just run, run, run them down for you. Uh, number, number, uh, number one, is the bad cut and what do i mean by the bad cut it's when you get this uh, this filter you're going to get a hose a long piece of hose and you have to cut it to uh, fit your application some people just simply go and just cut it right in the middle thinking 50 50 is fine then they realize as in my case behind me here where i have the canister on the far right side that you need one hose, in my case, the one on the left, uh, you need one hose to be much longer, or at least a third longer than the other hose to fit your application. If you've already cut that hose, guess what? You're not gonna be setting up that canister, or at least not setting it up until you get a replacement from a local fish store or from Fluval. So um, measure, determine where you're gonna position the canister before you make your cut, okay? Number two, wasting too, too much money, wasting a lot of money on sponges. The outside sponges can get pretty costly, even though you can find them uh, in uh, aftermarket, after, either aftermarket suppliers for these sponges, or you can get them right from Fluval. Uh, they are expensive, as are the middle, uh, you know, the middle uh, waffle style, uh, egg crate style sponges. These can, these can add up. And at first, when I first, when I first got this filter, I used to go ahead and replace them. I got a, uh, I got a tip from uh, Dennis Rudell and uh, over at Denny's Aquatics, and I started simply rinsing them in tap water, and uh, that worked out fine. I used to rinse them in aquarium water, but, the, but they hold so much waste that the aqua aquarium water would be black almost instantly. So I stopped doing that. I just rinse them under tap. I don't care about the bacteria that's living in the sponges. I have plenty of bacteria in the biological media that's in the center section, as well as, of course, on the substrate and, uh, and all of the, uh, you know, the decor in the aquarium. So I'm not worried about uh, the beneficial bacteria in the sponges, and I've never had a problem doing it that way. So rinse your sponges and um, replace them at some point when they start falling apart, which is what I'll do. When I start pulling out those sponges and I start getting pieces in my hand, it's time to replace them. Okay. <clears throat> Point three, mistake number three, not understanding the way the water flows. So one of the best kept secrets, I think, in, uh, in, in the aquarium hobby, <laughs> try, try and Google it and see what you can find. <laughs> you'll see, you'll find some, some diagrams and some sketches that people have made. But um, you, you, want to, um, you, you, want, you want to understand how the water flows in this so you can set it up correctly. And you know what, it goes, the water goes through those, those, those outside sponges that are on the outside of the baskets. The water goes through that and then is pulled up and then it actually is pulled down the middle. The water's last, its last travel uh, direction is down the middle of the canister through the middle basket, uh, the middle of the circular rings through the middle of the baskets, and then out and back up to the tank. So if you understand that, you can set it up correctly. This is why you, you have in your top middle basket, usually some sponges to catch the last bits of detritus, uh, the finer particles. So you might put your, your, uh, your pinky, uh, you know, your floss, things like that in that top basket. And then below that, your biological, okay? Your rings, your, your pumice, your lava rock, your biohome, whatever you're using in, those, um, in, the, in that middle section uh, below that final fine filtering. And then in the bottom, if you're using chemical, you know, Chemipure, uh, Purigen, things like that, put those in the very bottom middle 
basket, okay? So you have to understand the flow of the, of the fluval, okay? Uh, number four, for those of you who are plug and play, in other words, you just plug it in and want to <laughs> and get going and don't read the booklet, um, you will panic because your, your canister will shut off. This canister has a way of ridding itself of, um, of air, air bubbles, which affect performance and uh, you know, make, uh, actually slow down the, the uh, gallons per hour. And uh, so it rids itself of excess uh, air bubbles by shutting itself off. And right after you, you plug it in, in just a, maybe just a minute or two, it'll shut off. If you haven't read the booklet, you'll panic and you'll get onto some blogs and uh, onto some Facebook groups and, and ask, what's going on with my fluval? It's shutting off. Uh, and uh, maybe you'll even panic and unplug it thinking something's wrong and then plug it back in again. And of course that just starts the process over again. And you can spend a day doing that, never really understanding that it, it's actually designed to do that. So it rids itself of excess air bubbles, okay? So understand that it is shutting itself off by design and will continue to do so every 12 hours. It's part of the wonderful engineering and design of this fluval canister, all right? So um, the, last, uh, the last air is not servicing, not servicing your impeller. And uh, for some people that can be a little bit intimidating because you have to unscrew and remove the motor housing and uh, get in there, pull that magnet out, uh, make sure you uh, uh, perhaps lubricate that O-ring. And then just as importantly, be sure you screw it down uh, enough. Now we're reluctant to screw a two with too much pressure when you're putting, of course, metal screws on in, into plastic. It, it's a little scary because you might crack, but let me tell you, um, if you don't have it screwed down enough, you'll get a leak and it'll be hard for you to tell where that leak is coming from and it'll drive you crazy. Ask me how I know. <laughs> so at any rate, be sure to remove that housing, maybe with every other servicing would probably be enough. Remove that housing and, um, and uh, service that impeller. Give it a, a nice wipe down and uh, maybe uh, lubricate uh, with some uh, clean aquarium safe lubricant, that O-ring, and then be sure to screw it down uh, properly, okay? So those are the five and uh, I hope those come in handy for you. And again, uh, thank you, Evan, for the uh, introduction. <laughs> From this day forward, I will be known as, as Ben 10 Tips. <laughs> all right. Thank you, my friend. And thank you to all of you for tuning in. You are appreciated as always. And if you notice, uh, I am offering now those, uh, those uh, Ben O. Cichlid uh, t-shirts and, and sweatshirts and uh, tank tops uh, down here below the video. Uh, check them out. If you like them, order them. Uh, the money goes to a good cause. <laughs> more fish. What else? <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, my friends. And uh, be sure to follow on Instagram at ben.o.cichlid and come on over to Facebook at ben o apostrophe cichlid. Thank you so much.